Hey guys, Mugudoti here, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a quick summary of 7.23 and what I think it has done to the game. So I think the overall game seems to be playing out in a similar way to the previous patch, with bounty runes every 5 minutes making this kind of fight, fight intensive meta being definitely the one that's still being played. So these kind of lane winning heroes are definitely still very in meta. So I think um, these kind of early game to mid game heroes that were prominent last patch have become even more viable through, due to the introduction of outposts. Before, you used to manage to guarantee your team a gold lead just by controlling the bounty runes, but now you can also secure an, an XP lead for your team, meaning that you get even further ahead. Although you see a lot of people picking anti-mage and these kind of going back to farming heroes, maybe like Phantom Assassin, I think the way that they're getting played, or they were getting played, is still in this kind of fighting sense where you're securing these outposts and runes for your team. Uh, about the neutral items, I think it's kind of interesting. I think it definitely adds a bit of randomness to the game. Um, I don't think it's too out un unbalanced or but that luck based because but basically all the items are useful on some hero on your team. Like you might get an item, oh that's really good for your position 5, you might get an item that's really good for your carry and you kind of distribute them accordingly. And also the three items drop generally fast for each tier. so. And they're kind of evenly between each team. Obviously, there are better items that a team that one team could get, either Radiant or Dire, which may means that it is a, is a bit more luck based. But I think overall, it definitely makes the the game more interesting and more exciting to play. So, not too worried. As just a casual player, I think it's good. For pro players, it might be a bit frustrating because it's a bit more added randomness, less control over the game. The other thing that this does, these new, the introduction of neutral items, is that there are a lot of kind of good core items. So especially on cores, building small items becomes less valuable because you run out of slots quite quickly. So building like multiple wraith bands or like these little aura items like drums on carries becomes less viable because you want to have space for these items and not waste gold. So I'm just talking about the new heroes, which is something else that I haven't done. Um, I'm planning to make a Void Spirit guide as I've been playing him a lot of mid and offlane. I think he's a very, very good hero. I think he's definitely broken. I think the way he should be played is a bit like a puck. This is just my, my personal take. I haven't really studied too much of what the pros are doing, but I will do that when I go into my guide. He has amazing spell spell amps and he's got amazing survivability. He's got lots of evasive spells and he's also got a lot of magic nukes and a great magic talent. So I would just compare like the level 15, um, the level 20 talent, which is um, like 15% spell amp. And that's the same as Pucks, which people will go on him and they build this kind of Dagon build. And I've been going this mid this mid um, Void Spirit that goes to Dagon Rush. And you just just blow people up, basically instantly. And that's like the way I've been playing him. So I go like, you know, Veil and BKB and that kind of stuff. Anyway, more on that in the upcoming guide. For Snapfire, I haven't seen it. I haven't played Snapfire yet, even though I've seen a lot of her in my games. The grandma is, I think, much better as a position 4 hero than as a core, although I think he probably could be played as a core due to his amazing trading abilities after the buffs to his third spell, you know, his um, little machine gun. There's a little shredder, I don't know, but it does an insane amount of damage level 1 now, which is kind of ridiculous, so as a mid hero it could definitely be viable to take effective trades and kind of win the lane. Um, but I think definitely as position 4, I would compare her to something like a Skyrim mage, as she doesn't have that much good support, but has a lot of magic nukes, except it's kind of all in your ult. So if you're at the back of fights and you get your ult off, you can just do a ton of damage. And your E and your Q are not really that good team fight spells. Your W is nice, having a stun's good, but um, I think your ult is definitely the way that you should be focusing on her. You know, playing with an off lane. I think as a position four, you play with like the Legion commander who can duel, and you can just duel with your ult on top of it. You're always going to win duels and play that kind of way. To see a clear example of this fighting meta. We can look to the drafts of high mama and pro players in their pubs, with heroes like Ursa, Bloodseeker, and Razor being picked frequently with high success rates. To see this in greater detail, let's look to this 8000 average MMR game where Nico Baby is playing Bloodseeker carry. After drafting strong laners and early game heroes, in this game it's a comparison of Bloodseeker to Terrorblade, where Terrorblade has to farm a lot more, and Viper being this kind of early game group up with his team or a hero. Well that's kind of the way he's played. We can see the impact of Dyer getting 4 bounties of 5 minutes on the net worth charts. Of 
course, this is similar to the last patch, but this really proves the importance of winning side lanes. And I think this new kind of side lane meta is very similar to mid, with a kind of um, intense curry usage of getting selves and regen and taking trades, because winning the side lanes is very, very important. If we just have a look at the beginning of Nika Baby's laning stage, we can see how much he prioritized taking trades over focusing creeps. At 9 minutes into the game, we see Nico Baby make the decision to contest the bottom outpost with his team, knowing that either there will be a teamfight bottom or enemies will come top to kill him and take that outpost. This secures the bottom outpost in bounties, as well as a tower. The amount of pings that come out from both teams as 10 minutes approaches is really telling, showing us how high rank players read this meta. To explain quickly how the outposts work, to anyone who's confused, at 10 minutes, both outposts are available to be claimed, and the first team to claim them gains an XP bonus. Claiming both outposts does not give double bonus, but it stops the enemy team from getting any bonus XP at all. And after this initial activation, so after the, they've been claimed once at 10 minutes, the experience is awarded to whichever team controls the outpost at each bounty rune spawn, which is every 5 minutes. So this makes the incentive to fight with your team every 5 minutes a much more viable strategy than it was last patch. So definitely something to consider when you're playing any role. Anyway, that's all for this video guys. Um, guides for Changed Heroes will be coming soon, as soon as I stop grinding this free MMR. I've been playing a ton of solo ranked recently, and I've climbed probably another 300-400 MMR. And I've made it to like 6.6k, I peaked at 6.7k before, but overall pretty happy with this patch. It's good fun, it's making this game really fun to play. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, see ya. Kill here, Rick. It was an Morty, quit acting like a detective.